Hey guys, Toby Mathis here with Infinity Investing. And today we're gonna to be talking about how do you make money uh, in real estate if you don't have any money? And so we're just gonna look at the whole scheme of real estate. And so I'm gonna kind of map it out so you can kind of follow. But whenever you're dealing with real estate, uh, from the 10,000 foot view is there's situations where you have buyers and sellers, people trying to identify each other. There's people that are facilitating transactions like lenders, escrow agents, things like that, that are facilitating a purchase. Then when you have a purchase, there's people who are facilitating the use of the property. The most extreme example I could give you is like if I have a structure and here comes Hilton and they're gonna turn it in and they're gonna operate it as a hotel, I may own the real estate, Hilton may, uh, maybe the operating entity, sometimes you see hotel switch names, it's usually not the ownership, it's actually the, the people that are running it. On the other side, it's property managers. Hey, I'm helping you find tenants uh, for your apartment building or tenant for your single family or duplex, you name it. Then there are the people that are doing everything from the accounting on it to, hey, let's make sure that, that we're keeping all your records straight. Or we're in a niche, like, hey, we have real estate. We know there's a, an at-risk group. Let's say it's single moms, veterans, sober housing, transitional housing. Uh, autistic housing, residential assisted living, all those things. You have niches that again are going to somebody that has the real estate itself and you're bringing in different groups. All of those areas uh, have a revenue stream that you can plug into even if you don't have money. Like just keep in mind, even if I'm bringing money to somebody like I'm a mortgage broker, I'm bringing the money into somebody who's buying a piece of real estate and so that they can facilitate that transaction, I could get paid on that. Uh, if I'm a real estate agent and I represent uh, the some some buyers, I could get paid a commission for bringing that in. If I am a wholesaler and there's somebody who is gonna who, who might need to do a non-traditional sale, like maybe they're in foreclosure, maybe they're struggling to make payments, or maybe they didn't even know they were gonna sell it, and I I am a wholesaler and I work with a bunch of investors and I can just buy it cash. Right. And I work in that facility, you know, and in that arrangement or even Zillow is a great example. They're starting to buy properties. Right. Somebody's working inside there that's getting paid to do those transactions. Actually, Zillow is a really good example. Like all these different companies, brokerage houses, EXP, uh, Redfin, all these different groups. They're all monetizing real estate without owning the real estate. And so let's just kind of map it out. So we may have the pre sale where we're looking at buyers and sellers and putting them together. So we're gonna facilitate that relationship. We want these guys to get together and I'm gonna put myself in there right here. Yay, and I'm gonna get some cash for this. So how could I do that? Well, I could. maybe I'm working with a bunch of buyers that are investors. And maybe I, maybe I like single family residences that I can rent for a particular ratio of the price, like usually it's 1% of the price is what a lot of people use as a rule of thumb. I would see maybe a little bit higher than that if you can. Uh, at a minimum, we're looking at something called a cap rate, which you can learn about Infinity Investing so you know what it actually is. But it's basically the return on it. And so if I know a bunch of buyers and I know what they're willing to buy and they give me a list, like they're almost giving me a grocery list. Hey, Toby, I want you to go to the grocery store and buy me tomatoes and peppers and some steaks, right? I can just say, oh, and now I look for the sellers. So I'm looking for the grocery stores, right? Well, maybe the grocery stores are hidden, right? So maybe I have to go find some people that are willing to sell me what they're looking for. I'm looking for peppers and tomatoes and steaks, right? So I go out to the farmers, I go out to the ranchers, the, the cattle ranchers, all, and I'm looking around for those things. In the real estate market, I'm looking for qualified sellers. I'm looking for people that fit a certain profile where the house will meet the certain numbers. And so I know by what these guys are asking for. The buyers are saying, hey, we want a seven cap, right? Hey, I want a seven cap property, or there might be a four cap, it depends. And I'm looking in these particular areas and I want this three bedroom, two bath. And they're giving you an order list. You could put yourself into the revenue equation by finding them the properties that meet their order. And that's called a wholesaler. You can learn all about it again in Infinity Investing. Everybody's looking for wholesalers. I'll just tell you, there's people with 
massive appetites to acquire properties and they need people to go door to door, knock it around, know the area and have the expertise to go out and do that. I know this because uh, the groups that we work with wholesale hundreds of properties a month that don't fit a criteria perhaps for their investor, but fits a criteria for somebody else. So for example, if I'm a new family and I'm looking for a property in a great school district or this, that, or the other, that property may not fit the profile for an investor to purchase and rent, but it still may fit theirs. And so if I know, and on my list, I have saying, hey, if you have a property that fits this criteria in this zip code or these streets, once you start learning it, hey, I would like it. And then somebody else says, hey, if you have a property that meets these criteria in these particular areas, I'd be interested. And then you have somebody else that says, hey, as long as you're over there, if you see any duplexes or this, that, or the other, I'd be interested. Or somebody else says, hey, you know what? I'm looking for five to six bedroom that I can co-house. And, and this is what I'm looking for along bus lines and stuff. Then you just start order taking. You're going out and looking at all these properties and you know what you could pay for them because I can do the reverse calculation. Hey, you need seven cap. This is what the rents are in this particular area. This is what I could afford to pay. Here's your property. You know, it looks like I could afford to pay 200,000. You could make an offer tomorrow on that 200,000 knowing that you already have a buyer on it. And then you could take that, that, that acceptance on that offer and you can market it and get paid. That's what a wholesaler does. It's way easier than you realize. I should say it's simpler, not easy. It's simple because, hey, I know exactly who I'm buying for and I know what to look for, but it ain't easy because if it was easy, they would just do it. But I have sometimes have to go out and go door to door, go knocking around, driving for dollars is what they say. I have to do the research and I have to put the labor in and then I can bring it to people and I can get paid. I don't have to have a dollar to do that. You could just have to know your area. You just have to invest the time to start driving your streets and learn these things. And you could do it absolutely. So that's one side. The other side is the actual transaction, so the sale. There's obviously an easy route to be in, in uh, on that side, which is, hey, I could be in the, I could be a real estate agent, for example, and I start to cross over, you know, somebody's coming in, I get listings and stuff, but I'm getting a commission on the sale. So that's one side. Hey, is, does it make sense to be a real estate agent? Well, if you want to learn real estate and you want to get paid to learn real estate, that's actually not a bad route to take. There's licensing, there's requirements to do it, et cetera. Uh, I could also be on the side of, you know, so that's maybe the agent, they're getting paid, the brokerage. I could also be in the funding side. I'm bringing in money. Maybe I'm helping facilitate it. And so sometimes these same buyers are also going to be on the lender side. They're called, called non-traditional lenders, hard money lenders. And quite often you could be getting into that revenue stream as well. Again, you're looking for people that fit a certain criteria that may not be able to get traditional lending because maybe they have too many properties. Maybe they're not going to qualify under FHA, whatever the case. Maybe their credit is just horrific and you could take it to certain non-traditional. There's, there's that route. There's being in the broker side. Hey, I decide that I'm going to go get my broker's license. I'm not even going to be the agent. I'm just going to run the brokerage house and I'm going to oversee it. We have many people that do that. Or maybe they're really good at marketing. They're looking because they have buyers and they know they have buyers and they take it to the next level and they say, I'm also going to go to the, to the retail side and go to the traditional uh, buyer as well. And I'm looking for anybody who's selling a property. I'll list it or hey, I'll go out there and find out how to, how to fix your situation. I'll give you guys real life situation, gal, uh, lots of properties. And she's worried because her sole heir isn't good with money. And so she's thinking, oh, the worst thing that I could do is leave all my properties to my heir, my son, who's not gonna be able to, to manage them. So I'm gonna, I need to sell them ahead of time, but I don't wanna get killed in taxes. Well, that sounds to me like, uh, hey, I've done these transactions. I immediately know, I know exactly what you're looking for. You're looking to, to sell it, but you don't want to stop your revenue stream, nor do you want to get killed in taxes. Let's do an installment sale for the whole package. We'll manage it, and this revenue stream will go on for a period of years, and that will go to your heir. And so they will be receiving that money when you pass. And we can, we can you know, this works great when somebody's older and they don't want to dump a whole bunch of properties on somebody. On the same token, now I'm getting infinite revenue streams. Like this little guy up here really means something. I want real estate because it doesn't go away. 
doesn't, it doesn't wear out. It doesn't disappear. Real estate's there, right? If, and I can just put structures on it and I can generate income off of it. Even if I don't put a structure on it, some, some land, I can still generate revenue from it. Put a cell tower on it. I can sell mineral rights. I can do whatever, right? There's ways to, to, to monetize all those things. And all of those things go into the post sale. And so the post sale is really management. You could be looking at lease opportunities, all those things that you could do with the property. I could be looking at niches. I have groups, I have clients that run organizations that do housing, for example, for disadvantaged groups. It could be transitional housing. It could be for, for, for inmates, nonviolent offenders. There's people that are getting county money constantly to do the transitional housing. It could be single moms or it could be victims of, uh, of trafficking, whatever. There's lots of niches. It could be veterans housing. It could be residential assisted living for, for the elderly. It could be autistic housing. All of those things fall into these niches and you could actually have an org, we call them operators, where they go in and say, we're looking for properties and we want to lease the property from somebody else and then I'm gonna sub it out to these other organizations. Probably one of the most successful organizations we've seen doing that is PadSplit, where they say, hey, in a lot of cities, I can't afford my own apartment, so I'm gonna do uh, housing with other people. It's like a boarding house, except it's the new way of doing a boarding house, which is I have my own room with my own, uh, sometimes it's a kitchenette, sometimes there's a bathroom. I'm gonna have my own space, but it's gonna be 100, 150 to 200 bucks a week as opposed to doing these monthly uh, leases where I may not qualify for the lease. I may not have first and last month. I, like all these things come in and trip me up. Maybe I, maybe I got evicted once and I'm never gonna qualify for another lease again. This is where you go into the co-housing arena and now they're monetizing, bringing those people in to the property and then somebody else might even manage it. I could manage it or better yet, like think about Airbnb, VRBO. I'm doing, I'm a host, I'm getting paid. I don't own those properties. All I'm doing is taking somebody else's property and I'm monetizing it. There's literally endless opportunities. You just have to know where you could fit along this timeline. Now I know I made it simple and I know I threw a lot at you in a short period of time. That's why you come into Infinity Investing and start learning and start seeing A, what fits your personality. Not everybody needs to be in management, right? I'm the worst manager on the planet. I should not be managing a property, right? But I own a lot of properties and I have properties that I lease to niches. I have properties that I do and I have property management company that I could be a part of that I own, but I don't do the management. I have people that do that because they love to do the property management. There's nonprofit side that I'm involved in. I love working with the United Way and Catholic Charities and working with transitional housing and those types of things. I love doing that. Do I want to be the one that sits down with all the people and puts them in the property? No, that's somebody else's passion. And if that's you, then there's a spot for you in that realm. And I just say, you figure out where you fit. I am not a real estate agent, for example. I buy from wholesalers. There's a lot of wholesalers that make a lot of money off of me and my organization because we're like, yes, yes. If I say I want peppers, tomatoes, and, and steak, and they bring me peppers, tomatoes, and steak, you know what I say? Yes, I'll take that. And I say, this is what I'm willing to pay for it. If they bought it for 10 cents of, uh, on the dollar of what they're selling it to me for, I don't care. I've had wholesalers make $70,000 on a transaction. They brought me a great warehouse, something that I was looking for at the price that I asked for. And they brought it, they made 70 grand. Great. I've had real estate folks make hundreds of thousands of dollars on transactions when I buy an apartment or something. That's great. There's absolutely no problem with that because they're filling my need. I am the buyer. They find me the appropriate seller. They should get paid. You could get paid too. It's just figuring out which one of those niches, which one of those areas is best for you in your circumstances, depending on where you live, how good you are with technology, whether you're willing to go in and use a vehicle like PropStream and find pre foreclosures, whether you're willing to drop mail, whether you're whether to drive, whether you're willing to go out and do bandit signs and all those things that start generating the leads so that you could find the, the, the motivated sellers and match them with the appropriate buyer. If that's you, you could do very, very well without having a nickel to your name. Like you could literally jump in and start doing this stuff 
right away by just creating the relationships, finding the need, and helping put these things together, whether it be money, whether it be properties, buyers and sellers, whether it be managers, whether it be putting in different groups that might be using a property, all those things you can get paid on. It's just figuring out where the opportunity lies and which ones fits your personality. And again, you can learn all that at Infinity Investing. Hey, if you like these types of videos, please like it. And more importantly, give us your comments because we create content based off of the feedback. So, so make sure you do that. And then please, if you like this, subscribe to our channel. Thanks again. Bye.